biggest piece of news this week is the release or announced release of Dolly 3, which is the next generation of generative image models coming from OpenAI. So this is similar to the models like from MidJourney that generate images based on text prompts. Here's what we know. There's no white paper, so we don't know really anything about the functionality of the model. But supposedly, it will improve significantly on trouble points from existing generative image models. Things like text and images, which just doesn't work for any of the models, right? Text is always garbled and gibberish. Things like hands as well. Like you might notice that you can detect an AI-generated image just by looking at the hands because the hands are always a little tweaked out. And supposedly, Dolly 3 will address the hand issue, among others they haven't announced yet. One really cool thing is going to be available to ChatGPT Plus and the enterprise ChatGPT users in October within the ChatGPT interface. Anybody with these subscriptions can use the model right off the bat. And hypothetically, it's not going to involve any increase in cost, which is really cool. And it should be really easy to create images directly through the ChatGPT interface, which is going to be awesome because previous existing models require some knowledge of prompt engineering to be able to create the images you like. And hopefully this is going to lower the barrier for prompt engineering knowledge needed for creating cool graphics. A couple of AI safety notes I think are cool. It will be declining requests that ask for an image in the style of a living artist. I am sure that there will be a way to bypass this or jailbreak the model. But at the base level, I think this is an interesting place to start to deny this kind of stuff and reduce complaints about copyright infringement and reduce the amount to which the model just straight up copies existing art. Artists can also opt out of their work being used to train models for OpenAI. This is really interesting. So if you're an artist, you can go into this form online. You can submit descriptions of the pieces of art and you can submit images of the pieces of art that you want removed from the art databases. So this is basically telling us that all art that exists is in the database that's training this model. And the model has probably already been trained on this data, but for future training, you can request to have your data removed. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like this for authors as well. So authors who are upset can just request to have their books removed from the data set so future models that are trained will no longer have that data as part of the data set. This is an easy win for OpenAI because it probably doesn't take them a ton of work. There's likely some parsing through the existing data set, maybe some image recognition to recognize images by certain artists and pull them out. But really good for artists who are upset about their art being part of the training sets for these models. Although, once again, it's not clear if this model was trained on that art. It's not clear if they're going to retrain models after artists request to have their art removed because the training is very expensive and you can't just remove that. The next up is an interesting model from DeepMind called Alpha Miss Sense. So what DeepMind has done is they've created an enormous catalog of genetic mutations to help pinpoint the cause of diseases. These mutations are called Miss Sense mutations. They created a 71 million Miss Sense mutation catalog. And a Miss Sense, by the way, is a single letter DNA substitution. I had to it categorizes them as likely pathogenic or likely benign. Uh, this catalog has been published totally for research purposes, which is awesome. They published this paper in Science. In Alpha Miss Sense, DeepMind's classification model categorized 89% of all 71 million possible Miss Sense variants as either likely pathogenic or likely benign. And then by contrast, only 0.1% of those 71 million possible Miss Sense variants have been confirmed by humans. So this is a really cool case of artificial intelligence being leveraged alongside cutting edge science to really push the envelope on disease research, on genetic research, I should say. I think these kinds of projects where the best scientists and the best machine learning researchers can meet together and come up with these models to address these kinds of use cases is really going to push forward the field of science in general. I think it's an interesting startup that we should mention today regarding AI likenesses in media, because we talk a lot about artists and representation of artists in media, of actors in particular. So there's this startup called Metaphysic, which is saying, we know what the future is. The future is that your physical likeness is going to be entirely virtualized as an actor. It's going to be part of your brand and we're going to virtualize it for you and we're going to make it so you can sell it. Picture Tom Hanks virtual avatar that looks exactly like Tom Hanks and sounds exactly like Tom Hanks. And he can only do so many product endorsements, right? But in this future that Metaphysic is predicting, actually virtual Tom Hanks is going to be able to do 1 million product endorsements a day. It's an interesting idea. And we're going to have to see what the virtualization of this physical likeness will do to the value of the endorsements of these kinds of actors and also like the value of their appearance at all, right? Because name brand holds value in movies for actors and in commercials as well. And so when an actor can just be in like every movie, and then we also know that it's not their real self, it's just a virtualization of their self, it's hard to say what that's going to do 
to the brand, to the value of the brand? Are we just going to have way more content? Is the content that exists going to become lower quality? Are people going to start watching less things? They're going to start watching more things. It's definitely going to cause more competition in the media scene, which is tough for people that are already in the scene. Really good for people who are looking to enter the scene. Quick announcement, OpenAI is opening up invitations to their red teaming network. Red teaming is going into frontier models and working on steering these frontier models away from behavior, like unethical behavior, things like that. If you're an expert in any domain, really at all, and you care about AI usability and helpfulness, usefulness, and ethics, then you should apply to join your domain's red team because your time commitment could be as little as five hours a year, and you could still make a huge positive contribution to the ethics of frontier model development. Really interesting open source model I want to mention quickly, Persimmon. 8B, if you like open source models, if you like using open source models, this is an 8 billion parameter open source model with very competitive performance at the 8 billion token count. And it has 16K tokens and it was trained from base with 16K tokens. So if you're looking for a high token, low cost model that you can pull yourself, check out Persimmon 8B. Last piece of news is regarding self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles, and a new strategy for training self-driving cars. The promise of fully autonomous self-driving cars that you literally never need to touch the wheel. You can just go in your laptop and mess around and it's going to drive you from LA to San Francisco and nothing bad is going to happen. That was promised years ago. And that date line keep getting pushed back with a lot of problems, right? One problem being that these cars perform pretty well in San Francisco, but there's some bias there because they're collecting a ton of data in San Francisco. So it's natural that they're going to be performing well on the data sets that they've been tuned and trained for. Right. Another issue is with the actual effectiveness of these models, wherein bad situations do occasionally happen. And when there is a crash, it's who's liable for this crash. And what it does most of all is reduce trust in the model. So trust in ADs is not particularly high right now. And Wave is looking to improve on that trust by adding a new data stream to their data set, which is text. So basically what's happened is they've collected an AV training data set like any other company and they added live commentary. So the expert drivers, so they call expert drivers, I think it'd be funny to meet some of these expert drivers as they navigated through roads in the UK, they actually explained out loud why they were taking certain actions. They said, I'm slowing down because a car is merging in my lane. And so then this data stream is added in with all the other data streams, like the camera data and the LiDAR data, such that the commentary is intrinsically part of the functionality of the model. And then when the model operates, it's also generating commentary at the same time. So the goal is to build trust and decision making by building a vehicle that actually explains to you why it's making decisions in real time. It does also raise a lot of questions regarding explainability, how they're rating positive responses and how they're rating negative responses, because we know from AI safety and responsibility that a model, when it outputs an output and it gets rated as positive or negative, it's going to steer towards outputting a positive output every time. But what it's really steering towards is a human being giving it a thumbs up. And it's not necessarily on the inside. In fact, it has no reason to on the inside of the model actually train towards building a good set of reasoning. It's just going to be trained towards giving people an output they like. It's a really interesting idea, I think. But until some of these AI responsibility and AI safety and understanding the inner workings of the model and us being sure that we can build AI that we can trust till that's really locked in. I don't totally buy the wave idea, but I'd like them to prove me wrong. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed what you hear, subscribe and we'll have another episode for you next week.